Dear friends, I'm very happy to be here with you again. I think it was about 25 years ago that I stood on this pulpit, but you were fewer people at that time. So I thank Almighty God that you are persevering. And thank you, Father, for also uh, allowing me to come back to the old Aussie again. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The good fathers have asked me to preach a little on vocations in the family. Well, there are two sources from where vocations come. The first is just plain miracle. Sometimes the young man, young lady come from God knows where and they persevere. They become priests, religious, nuns, brothers, whatever it may be. But unfortunately, I can't speak too much about the miracles because I can't do them. Only God can do them. So let's move on to the second source, and that is certainly from good and holy Catholic families. There's no doubt upon that. But the question here, of course, is um, in the family, how do you, or what do you do in order to foster vocations? Well, I think that question can go together with what do I do to foster good and holy marriages of my children? It's the same thing, really, in a certain way. You'll understand what I'm saying. And I'll say to you, well, perhaps you say uh, a prayer life, and I will say, mm, mm, yeah, no, no, no. The most important part of fostering future vocations in the family is that parents persevere in patience in their marriage vows. Remember when you got married? You said for better, for richer, for richer, for, no, what was it, richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, in-laws and outlaws. No, it was not in-laws and outlaws. You married those marriage vows to stay together, to form a family, to fight in this mad world of ours, and to show your children the example, a good and holy example of perseverance. There is nothing that touches a child so much than when they see mom and dad through thick and thin trials and tribulations, because there are lots of them, and I know that, stick together, continue, and work it out. It's true, of course, little children, they, they just want to play. They don't understand these things at all. But, you know, some of us are older, and when we look back, we say, oh, boy, wow. Mom and dad, they stuck it out. They persevered through all these trials and tribulations. I did not even think of these trials and tribulations. I was a child. I was just playing around. But later on, their example touches you deeply. I remember one day speaking to Archbishop Lefebvre, and he, he put his finger to my face like this, and he said, be careful, be careful, never cause the break of a marriage. I said, yes, Monsignor. <laughs> and why? Once a marriage is broken, everything is broken. Everything. Later on, that child will probably marry and become a broken marriage himself. You know, in the ancient law of the church, a child coming from a broken marriage could not become a priest. You say, but, 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 but the child was innocent, no? Of course, of course the child is innocent. The problem is that later on in the priesthood, when the times get rough and tough, they do the same as the parents do. They break it. And so that's why I say to you that the very foundation of the future of a child of a vocation, and even of a good and future holy marriage, is the good and holy example of the parents, of perseverance. There are trials and tribulations. I want to tell you a little story here. You know, I like to play the devil's advocate. I love it. <clears throat> One day I had the invitation to a, um, a, a little marriage feast. This old couple was celebrating their 75th anniversary. Yeah, you can imagine their age. Huh? 
Now they were still upright. They were still sitting upright. 75 years of marriage. So I played the devil's advocate and I sat next to the, to the lady and I said, Mom, I've got a question for you. She says, yes, Father, what can you help? I said, I said um, <clears throat> here we go. Have you ever thought of divorcing your husband? She nearly had a heart attack. She looked at me sternly. And then she got a little smile on her face. I thought, oh, oh, what's coming now? And she said, Father, there were times in my life I wanted to kill him. <laughs> but divorce never entered my mind. I never forgot that answer. It was so beautiful. I know the first part, the second part. <laughs> the times in my life I wanted to kill him, but divorce never entered my mind. There was no such thing. What a beautiful example of perseverance. And if you ask me what is the second thing in marriage, in a family, that is so important to form good and solid vocations for the future and good and solid marriages also, I would say justice. Justice? Yeah, justice. I'm not talking about the justice regarding the tax man. For me, that's a... No, I'm talking about a justice that's much more important. And that justice is simply to do the duty of your state of life. To do the duty of your state of life. That husbands, you take the care to be father, to feed your children, to clothe them. You think that's not important? <laughs> Let me tell you the story. Did you read the life of the archbishop? I hope you did. There's a case of which when he returned from Africa, he was uh, assigned to the seminary in uh, Mortain in France. But now this was right after the Second World War. Everything was in devastation. And the poor archbishop, instead of teaching the young seminarians, had to run around, run around, run around, trying to find food for them. So much so that later on, one of the seminarians who became a priest remembered that and said, Monsignor Lefebvre, ah, he was a good, good priest. He fed us. <laughs> yes, a very basic thing. And yet, a very important thing. Fathers, to protect your children from evils. When you yourself play around with evil, whether it be with a woman next door, or whether it be on your cell phone, what do you expect your children to do? They're going to do the same. You know that little Johnny likes to imitate his father. And his father does bad things, he's going to do it too. And so, fathers, you need to be holy fathers. Good fathers? No, we have enough of good fathers. We need holy fathers. And mothers, we often say that mother is the heart of the family. And it's so true. The whole family palpates with the mother when she takes good care of her children. And she takes her place after her husband. And so the order in the family is something very beautiful. When you do the duty of a state of life. Who was it? It was one of the popes. Pardon me, I can't remember which pope it was. He laid down the rules for canonization of saints. And he said, give me the person who perfectly fulfills the duty of his state of life and I will canonize him as saint. Oh. You know, at this very moment, I'm hesitating to tell you a little story, but I think I should tell it to you because it's such a beautiful thing. I hesitate because it concerns my own mother. She was towards the end of her life. I had to leave. I had to go to my next post. And she said to me, when you go, go. And I come to die, do not come back. You stay at your post. You stay at where your duty is required of you. What a beautiful reflection. What a beautiful saying. To do your duty. 
As we priests have to do our duties, so you too have to do your duties to educate your children the fear and the love of God. And it is in an environment like that, my dear friends, that I will say your children will open, may I use the word, automatically, their little ears to the call of God. For certainly it is not you who are calling your children to God or to vocation. It is God. We call it vocation, which comes from vocare. And vocare means in Latin to call. It is God who calls. It's not you. And yet you need to lay down the foundation. We say in theology, grace presupposes nature. You cannot, God does not give grace to an animal. And if you pour water into a bucket that's full of holes, it won't hold the water. So when you pour grace into souls that are far, far from God, it doesn't hold. But in children, souls that have a very simple and basic upbringing, their grace does hold. And yes, once you have that beautiful, basic structure of the family, then indeed prayer plays an immense role. But let me just say this, since I'm not going to go deep in detail, simply say this, and that is to teach your children to love to pray. To love to pray. And they will not love to pray if you don't love to pray. I mean real love of prayer. I want to tell you this little story. It took place many, many years ago, I think about 25 years ago. I met a family who had eight little children. And when I said goodbye, the mother said, Father, would you like to stay because we're going to pray the family rosary now? I said, oh, certainly I'll stay. Okay. So I knelt down. And after the first decade, the little one jumps up and runs off. After the second decade, the next one jumps up and runs off. After the third decade, the next one jumps up and runs off. And I'm there. I wonder when they're coming back. <laughs> and the rest of the rosary was finished by the older children. So, after the rosary, I looked at the mother with a little bit of a uh, question mark on my face. And I said, uh, did the little children have problems with their tummies? She said, no, father. No, the rosary is too long for the little ones. They must just stay for one decade. And if they go a little bit older, two decades. And I thought... Wow, that's beautiful. We don't give hard bread to babies, do we? I said it was 25 years ago. It was uh, recently, not too long time ago, I came and stumbled across that family again. And of course they were all adults. And you know that not one of them have lost the faith. Some of them got married and they married very well, very beautifully. Not one lost the faith, not one. They're all still firm in the faith, the whole lot. What a beautiful example of to teach your children not only to pray, which of course is important, but to teach them to love to pray, to love the good God. And the more these uh, things like these cell phones and screens and all those things come into your family, I guarantee you the less they will love God and they'll turn their hearts away from God. Fathers, take good care to make sure that the devil does not enter your, your homes. It is your duty. Finally, ask the Blessed Virgin Mary. Always pray to the Blessed Virgin Mary and ask of her to help you, and St. Joseph too, of course, that you may be helped to form a holy family so that when God may call your children either to a married life or the religious life, whether it be a brother, sister, or priest, their ears and their hearts may be opened, and they may do always the holy will of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.